Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you viewers on Facebook, Springwater Baptist Church, and this is how we're doing church right now, so welcome each and every one today. And I'd like to start with a word of prayer before we get any, any further into this, so let's pray. Father, we do come before you, Lord, with thankful hearts. We thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. We thank you for the forgive, forgiveness we've received through your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And, and Lord, I just pray that uh, with all that's going on, that your Spirit would speak to hearts, Lord. And I pray all those who view today would uh, allow the Spirit of God to speak to their hearts. And Lord, for anything that's accomplished, I give you praise, glory, and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, it's been a, an interesting week. We've uh, Yesterday we had weather that we hadn't experienced in a long time. And, and with the things that are going on with the death of George Floyd just a few days ago and the turmoil we see there, it brought to mind uh, that God has, had already put this in my heart. So this morning we're going to talk about the fruit of perseverance. The fruit of perseverance, the scripture text this morning, will be taken from Ephesians chapter 6. I will read verses 10 through 18, and then we'll see what the Lord has for us this morning. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, unto you, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication, for all saints. This morning we're springtime and I'm using kind of the metaphor of, of the tree to give you what I believe the Lord has given me to share with you this morning. Because we, when you look around us today, just in the last few days, we've, we've seen uh, and been exposed to so much, well, I'll just call it stuff that's going on that, quite frankly, we're not prepared for. Uh, these things are just things that, that happen. True, weather, weathermen do make an attempt to give you kind of what's coming along. But, but to actually experience it, when we had the thunderstorms yesterday, you could actually feel the house shake. That's the first time that's ever happened. And then with, with the, <clears throat> the untimely death of, of George Floyd and the circumstance and around it, it seems that everything which we were already in chaos, we find ourselves even more so in, in really more and deeper chaos and for us this morning as, as children of God I'd, the scripture text is really going to really help help each and every one of us ground ourselves because the Bible has called us to persevere as it says in verse 10 verse 18 watch thereunto with all perseverance and perseverance is a word that you don't hear much about it today but this morning you're going to hear a bunch about it so uh, hang on to your seats and or whatever you're watching on, and let's see what God has before you. I started with in verse number 10, because it tells us as children of God what we need to do. We're to be strong in the Lord, in the power of our own might? No, in His might. And He gives us the, the whole armor of God, because we understand as, as believers that the things that are happening here on this earth are not just because of the consequences of of what people are doing it's because there's spiritual wickedness there's war going on in heaven right now between good and evil and oft times even with what's happened in the last few days you might be thinking evil is winning and the answer is that's not possible that's not possible 
But the fact that we have to realize that the physical issues that we're experiencing on this earth today is because of a spiritual warfare that's going on. And it goes on to give us the whole armor of God to protect us from head to toe. And as Christians, it's a metaphor of that we, um, if you're in any, any kind of uh, combat, your weakest, weakest uh, part of your armor is where there's any gaps. And with the armor of God, there are no gaps. There are no gaps. And the, so the beauty of it is, as a child of God, it, that we all have that armor. I think it's a good exercise to practice putting it on. But all of us have that armor as a child of God. It's there. And when we acknowledge it, I believe the fact when you acknowledge it that it's there, it gives you confidence. It gives you strength from above. And so this morning we're going to kind of look at the, in the area of a tree, we're going to start at the, at, at the ground level. And so point number one is the root, <coughs> excuse me, of perseverance. <coughs> take a drink of water here really quick. The root of perseverance. <clears throat> you see, everything that's above the ground, how stable it is, depends on the root system. And so the, the root of perseverance, number one, is Jesus Christ himself. See, a lot of people can prepare for things that are coming their way, but as children of God, we have a root system. We have a foundation that no man can defeat. It's the root of Jesus Christ. And that foundation, that root gives us the ability, as the scripture tells us, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, to, to have a foundation that won't crumble, that we have an anchor that'll hold, we have assurance that God is with us, all those things, that root, that base, that groundwork that we have uh, cannot be uprooted. And that means the rest of the tree that comes out of that, you don't have to worry about the root system because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross. Because he lived a perfect life and he was put to death on that old rugged cross and was buried in a borrowed tomb and has risen again that third day and now ascended into heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father. I praise God that that's my root system. And I praise this God this morning that that's your root system. That your, your whole, everything that you are is rooted in in Jesus Christ and a relationship with him. But secondly, not only the root of perseverance, but the trunk. We're going to go from the root to the trunk of perseverance. The trunk of perseverance are trials, tests, and troubles. So now you've got this root system, and now the trunk's coming out of the ground, and in that trunk is all the things that's going to make that tree grow. And it's, here we are in 2020 experiencing COVID-19 lockdowns. Uh, fighting a disease we can't see. M people who are called experts trying to figure out how they're going to stop it. And all the conditions have been put around us on not only in our own uh, state and city, but all over the world. And then this murder, on, murder that happened just a few days ago, th those are all trials. Those are all tests. Those are all uh, just things that are going on in our lives that for most of us, we don't have any control over those things, do we? We can't, we, 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 we can prepare as for disaster as much as we can, but the Bible says in this world you'll have tribulation. But then it goes on to say, but be ye of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So without tests and trials and troubles, our faith is not going to be strong. Our uh, ability to persevere we're not going to have the 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 training and the experience to to persevere see a lot of things when come our way what's the first thing we want to do we want to quit why because it's the easy way out but for a child of god uh, there is no easy way out there's only the only way that's going up but so we're here we're, we're called to persevere i'm going to give you some scriptures in First Second Timothy chapter three verse twelve, Paul told Timothy, Timothy this. He said, "Yea, and in all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution." And persecution and and perseverance go hand in hand. Paul also talked about his troubles. You think we're having troubles here today? 
with, with a lockdown and, and cities being burned, that's a pretty broad picture. Let's go by a look at one man's tests, one man's trials, one man's troubles. Comes from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. It's a little lengthy, but I think you'll get the picture. The picture. The picture that I want to paint for you this morning, because this is the most important part. Is that uh, even though I can't say it, I want you to get it. Okay, <laughs> you need to get this. But here it is. <clears throat> of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeyings, journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. That's a lot of trouble. That's a lot of trial. That's a lot of tests. And not only do these come externally, they're also coming from internally. We can place tremendous pressure on ourselves through, I'll give you some examples, <clears throat> worry, setting unrealistic goals for ourselves, thinking negatively, negatively toward other people, not being thankful and not rejoicing in the Lord. And all those things go against what we just read about in, 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 First Corinthians, I mean in, in Ephesians chapter 6 about that we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We need perseverance when we get ourselves into situations such as this. Just in our conversations this morning with just a couple of people, you bring up what's, what happened over in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it just stirs up all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of emotions, and how we personally might want to handle them. But that's not what God wants us to do. God, God wants it to, to, for us to, uh, as we continue in this message this morning, to, to look at things through the Word of God, the biblical perspective on how we're to handle things. Peter said this regarding those who suffered various trials in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, <clears throat> that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. When we find ourselves in a time of trial and tribulation, we're not to fold, we're not to give up, but what? We're, we're, to, we're, we're to give praise and honor and glory because one day, use this word cliche, these words quite often, but this too shall pass. This time will pass. And as children of God, we'll get through it. And one day we'll be in glory. James said in chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptations, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The crown of life. That's standing true for God in regardless of the circumstances. God has given us the ability to do that. How has he done that? How has he given us the ability to stand up for him at all times? Well, as a child of God, you've got, you were given one thing, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, if I'm going to read these off really quick, and if you think about all the f one fruit, nine flavors of the of the of the fruit of the Spirit, you have everything you need to combat and to stay, combat giving up and to stay in the fight, to persevere. You were given the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what we're not seeing today, self-control. That not we're, we're not seeing that today, but as children of God, you were given all that you needed the day you got saved. Enduring tests and trials will help us to persevere. Thirdly, <coughs> the branch. The branch. I'm just going to kind of cut this back. I'm just going to call it the branch of truth now. We know it's all about perseverance, but now we're going to look at the branch of truth. Here's the branch of truth. 
the Word of God. And just the branches that comes out of the trunk comes out all different ways, doesn't it? There's a lot of branches on a tree. That, that, that tells you how the Word of God can permeate everything. It's everywhere in that tree. Truth gives us a reason to persevere. You see, it's not enough to make a, a decision thick or thin. I'm good. Peter, Peter said, I, Lord, I will stand with you and I will, I, I, will be, I will die for you. And what did he do? Just a few bit down the road. Denied the Lord three times. That shows the strength of persevering on your, on your own. You and I can't do it. It's not enough to persevere if we don't have something to hold on to. This is one thing we have that was worth holding on to. And in order for our perseverance to have value, we must have truth in our lives. And that truth is the book, the Bible, the Word of God. In John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, it sums it up. We've got to abide in Christ's words to have truth in our life society today as it's been moving in that direction for a long time we it's been called situation ethics if it feels good do it if it's right in my eyes it must be true it must be right and the answer is no no there's only one truth and it's what's written in the word of god and if what you believe if your truth doesn't line up from the, from this book then it's worthless that means it can ebb and flow and change. And that's what we see in society today. Truth is going every which direction, but the way it ought to be pointing, it ought to be pointing right to this book. By persevering and doing what is right, we can be assured that our perseverance isn't empty. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. This is, this is, this is a great verse. And it's talking to believers. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I say amen to that because that's the truth that comes out of what? Comes out of the book. If it comes out of the book, it's got to be right. Not like the internet. If it's on the internet, it's got to be right. No, no. If it's in the word of God, it is, it not can't be right, it is right. And God is well pleased when, when, we, when we live a life that's based in truth. Hebrews 13, 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Oft times the truth of the word of God means that we're going to have to make sacrifices. But if it's in this book, is a sacrifice worth taking? It goes back to <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verse 1, where it tells us to be a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You and I are living sacrifices. And let me tell you, it's an easy thing to make a sacrifice when you know it comes from truth. And you know it's true and you know it's right. Then you can follow it, believe it, trust it, and move forward. Number four, the flower of time. Time. So we've gone from the root to the trunk to the branch. Now we're looking at the flower. And right now, there's, you've seen a lot of flowers out there. Time is a necessary component to persevere. Why is that? Well, in order to persevere, that's, that's telling you it's all based in what? It's based in time. We can't say we've persevered until a sufficient amount of time has gone by. When you were young, we all heard the question or asked the questions, are we there yet? Uh, we're not there yet. Because we're all gathered together here. You're watching, <laughs> watching on Facebook Live then. No, we're not there yet because our there is glory. But here it is. <clears throat> when such a question is asked without a sufficient amount of time passing, we know that someone hasn't been persevering. You can only see I've persevered when you can look back and reflect on what God has done, not what you have done, what God has done in your past. Because everything that happened B.C. before Christ, well, God was, God was with you in that too. He was, he was preserving you, 
but more importantly, what he did since the day you received Jesus Christ and what you persevered since then. Because when you became a child of God, you had to make choices. You had to make decisions. You had to make sacrifices. And in all those things, when you look back to it, you, you, have, you take knowledge and then it becomes its wisdom. And what's because once it becomes wisdom, it'll last. Repetition helps us to persevere. And the more we experience something, the better we are to endure it. But we recognize, however, that all the perseverance that we're going to experience here on this earth is temporary, isn't it? I didn't say that, but the Apostle Paul did in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He said this, and you can take this forever how you want it, but in spite of what we see going on today, uh, today's affliction that we are going through, it still falls into the category of light. Second Corinthians 4, 17 and 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal Psalm chapter 90 verses 9 and 10 this 9 and 10 says this for all our days are passed away in thy wrath we spend our years as a tale that is told the days of our years are three score and ten and if by reason of strength they be four score years yet is there strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away Time is our friend in developing perseverance. And really, when you look at what's going on today, how you and I as believers come out of what's happening in our nation and in our world, it'll develop perseverance. So now we've gone from the root to the trunk to the branch to the flower the last thing this morning is the fruit of perseverance. Perseverance is trust. The fruit of trust. In order to persevere, we need to trust in the Lord. Now, <clears throat> trusting in God will get us through what's going on today. COVID-19 situation is going on in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the things that are happening in our own hometown. I watched some of the videos this morning of what happened in downtown Portland. And the, the flesh part wants to hmm, grab something and let's go take care of those people. But we, we have to, that's the flesh talking, that's not the spirit. <clears throat> the, the, the Bible says that the What was it? No, I lost it. No, no, it was the, 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 huh? Yeah, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. But when we think about the spirit, that's where we have to focus. Thank you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths when we trust in the Lord our future will be or is secure <clears throat> Psalm 37 5 states commit thy way unto the Lord trust also in him and he will bring it to pass you see the world especially with what's going on with the riots and the looting I can't even, won't even want to go into what's wrong about that it, it's wrong uh, socially it's wrong economically it's wrong spiritually it's just wrong but for for you and I as children of God even though those things are going around our trust gets shaken in in what uh, uh, authorities the police we, it seems like that the, the, everything's been taken out of our hand and what can we trust we can't trust the authorities and we can't trust who can we trust well, we can trust God. 
When we trust in the Lord, we have a safe haven. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust in Him at sometimes? No, it says, Trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. And you can make that even personal and say, God is a refuge for me. It's okay to take it personal. Because He is. He, he's, he's Lord of all and over all, but Jesus Christ is personal. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And as a Christian, He is your God. He is your Savior too. When we trust in the Lord, then we will endure. Some say we say we can endure, or we could endure, or even shall endure. No, we will endure. Psalm 125 verse 1 says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. When we trust in the Lord, we have great strength. Isaiah 26 4 says, Trust ye in the Lord forever, and for and for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And then back to our scripture text. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Trust in the Lord is the key to developing a, a, a lifestyle of perseverance. Because we really, we really would like things to go smoothly. We would really like to see justice hammered out right now. We would lo- 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 we would love to be going to glory. We're ready. You know, as, as a Christian, every Christian on this planet is ready to go. But everyone who hasn't believed in Jesus Christ, they're not ready. And when you look around what's going on today and, and the amount of evil and you think, but think about you. Think about me. Before Jesus Christ came, before the Spirit of God came into our hearts. We had the ability to do what all those people are doing right now. Any of us could do that. And really, if you think about it in your own heart, you would probably do some things pretty radical right now given the opportunity but we have a restraint we have the spirit of God that says no no what those people are doing is wrong but the scripture tells us what we're to hate the sin but love the sinner we're to pray for our enemies and do good to them and we look at those people as, as enemies but they're just like you and I. They're human beings. I did a message a while ago that talked about the value of a soul. And, and to, to, to God, our Heavenly Father, every soul is what? It's priceless. Not some souls, but every soul. So even when we get in our minds, yeah, I want, we really want to get into the fight. You want to get in the fight, get on your knees. You want to get in the fight, then then do something that can make a difference. Not just in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm. Because nothing would, would be more satisfying to see uh, th- this, these... I don't even know how to describe them. Chaos makers to become brothers and sisters in Christ. What would it be? What would it be? That's a wonderful thing to think about. Because I don't know about you, but I was kind of, kind of a little wicked little heathen myself. And yet, God changed this. And even though I'm not perfect, not claiming to be, won't be perfect until glory, but I can look back and say that, that I, I'll, I'll persevere for God because of all the things we talked about this morning. From the root to the fruit, Everything in between is worth it all. That song, you know, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It will be worth it all. But during this time, we have to keep our, our, our focus on the things of God. I just read a little book called Rediscovering Jesus. And I, I finished it just a couple days ago. But as I, re, as I read that book, it was a... 30 lesson review of what the scripture tells about Jesus Christ. 
and the impact that Jesus Christ has on the world. And it affirmed to the fact that, yeah, my flesh would want to do this thing, but reviewing these 30 short little, I'll call them lessons, challenges, because everything had a scripture text and a challenge and a response to it. And what it, does, what it did is, and it all taken out of here, it made me realize that, wow, I'm no different than those people out there. Because I want to do some of the same things that they're doing to them. May not be looting and rioting, but <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I want God to take care of them, take care of them now. But that's not right. That's not right. To persevere means to stand for everything I've talked about this morning. And I pray that the root is part of who you are, that your root is Jesus Christ that's put you into the ground to hold you firm, that you have a relationship with Him. Not about religion. Religion has nothing to do with it. It's all about a relationship, a personal, one-on-one relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's my prayer this morning, is that you can say, I am one of His. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am a child of God. And everything that's been said this morning about perseverance... uh, I'll keep my mouth shut and make promises that I can't keep. But in my heart, not like Peter, he made promises he couldn't keep. But you and I as believers, let's just trust God that he's, that everything of how he's working in our lives, what he's given us as tools today, that we would use them wisely and for his honor and for his glory. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I do pray for the situation that's going on in our nation today. It started in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It spread all over the country. And Lord, we've seen about every kind of wickedness you can imagine. But Father, even with social media and all the immediate reports that we can get, uh, you've seen it all. You saw it all before eternity passed. You knew this was going to happen. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen each and every believer through the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the fellowship that we have, that we would stand strong in the Word of God and to honor you with what we choose to do in relationship to what's going on with this senseless murder, uh, what's going on with COVID-19 all over the world. And Lord, that just ultimately uh, our home is not here on this earth. This this world is not our home, as the scripture text says. We're just passing through. And until we go home to glory, may we live for you each and every day. And I give you praise, glory, and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.